This cassette tape consists of hundreds of brief lessons by Vernon Howard. Each item is packed with practical wisdom for daily guidance. It is characteristic of Vernon Howard to range from the serious to the lighthearted, from the tough to the gentle, but all reveal the great secret about life. That secret is, you can live above the storm clouds of ordinary existence. You can become a completely different kind of man or woman. You can personally discover this magnificent secret. The following gems of wisdom were read aloud by Vernon Howard at our classes here in Boulder City, Nevada. Please listen to this tape many times with alert attention. Each time more pure gold will appear. The life of a losing human being is dominated by repetition and blundering thoughts. The life of a winning human being is dominated, dominated by new and revealing light. When, faith, when faced with your task of being a mechanic or school teacher or doctor, you may be very competent, but what happens when you are faced with being a human being? There is no doubt about it. An avoided pain must be suffered again and again. When avoidance is ended, the pain is ended. It is pure delusion that you make your own intelligent decisions. All you do is to follow eagerly the dominating self-desire of the moment. Know that there is such a life as a choiceless life which has no contradiction. It comes to anyone who admits to the myth of having independent judgment and choice. Try to sense that there is a truly unique reward, but do not yearn to know its nature in advance and do not hope for its swift arrival. The longer you wait for your reward, the more rewarding it will be. This is because you have consistently cut off yourself as its source. This makes a higher source a necessity, a happy and willing necessity from reality itself. The reason you should get understanding is because it will prevent misunderstanding. Pretty profound, huh? It really is. Your attempts to use human laws to make yourself equal are dishonest, egotistical, ridiculous, and futile. But anyone as sick as you cannot understand this. Besides, you don't want to be equal. You hope to end up superior. Your anger at this statement proves how true it is and how low you are. Never trust a dangerous machine, for you could get hurt. This includes a machine having wheels and gears and bolts, or a machine having eyes and ears and arms. All the usual attempts to feed hungry people around the world will only create more hungry people. Why? because deluded human beings can only create delusory solutions. All who really understand this, please raise your hands. Nobody understands it? The following is a personal request by Vernon. I would like to make a special request of anyone who finally leaves this class. In your dramatic speech of departure, please be sure to include the following thoughts. Quote, Vernon, I want to thank you for all you have done for me. I will always be grateful for your deep wisdom. I want you to know how much it means to me. End quote. You see, so many departing people use this line that I have come to expect it and would be disappointed if you did not include it. It means so much to me. <laughs> you think you are sublime when you are really subhuman. There is a powerful cry in a weak person when in contact with a strong person. The weak individual silently cries out, quote, Please don't tell me that I am all right when I am really all wrong. Don't let me get away with my sick behavior. Even if I hate you for rebuking me, please keep telling me how foolish I am. Please be stronger than my hatred, for I am not. Deep within, I know that your strength is the only chance I have, end quote. A man who was burning with hatred and violence was walking across a high bridge. Looking down at the sidewalk below, he recognized his enemies, the people he blamed for his miseries. He quickly glanced around for some rocks to drop on his enemies, but saw none. A second scheme excited his mind, which was to attack them personally. Thrilling with anticipation, he climbed to the top of the rail and paused for a moment to fully enjoy his throbbing emotions. 
Revenge is mine, he screamed triumphantly as he plunged downward. It happens every day. If you make a physical break with an unwanted person or condition without also making a mental break, you have broken nothing. You are still tied to the other person by a powerful rubber rope that will sooner or later snap you back to the same or a similar condition. Only a mental break, a spiritual break, can free you from a punishing situation. This spirituality can be described as a new and a superior kind of loyalty. You are loyal to your impression of the existence of something higher than anything on earth, including yourself. A sick teacher of religion needs his students to also be sick. In his delusion, he takes the weakness and dependency of his students as sign of his strength and authenticity. If a particular student begins to detect reality in spite of the falseness of the teacher, the relationship changes. The teacher begins to break his dependency upon the false teacher. The student begins to break his dependency upon the false teacher, and the teacher begins to openly despise the student. It is accurate to say that he now openly despises the student, for he secretly despised him all along. Two weak people always hate each other, for the weakness in one reminds the other one of his own weakness. Here's one benefit of firm class rules. A student who is eagerly looking for an excuse to leave the class will use a particular rule as, a re as his reason for leaving. He will leap on it like a shark after bait. It is best for the class as a whole that such a student become an unstudent as soon as possible. Class rules are subtle tests that weed out the unfit. No one has ever left this class, nor will anyone ever leave this class except in anger and depression. He will, of course, deny this with his usual lies and hatreds. Such a person is in ghastly danger. He does not see and he does not want to see that he is really hating the truth he heard in the class. Such a person has chosen doom as his constant companion. Stay away from him, for he will eagerly try to lure you into joining him in his doom. Half your conflicts will end by realizing that you cannot hold in your hand both a sugary lollipop and a healthy loaf of bread. It is one or the other. So here is a new class poem for you to memorize. Drop, drop the lollipop. <laughs> I heartily agree with one teaching in this class, which is that this is an insane world. Only a world filled with insanity would fail to recognize my greatness clothed in modesty. <laughs> when a lost human being gets what he demands, he's, he experiences these feelings in the following order. One, elation and e ego-created cheerfulness. Two, the fading of elation and the entrance of small doubts about himself. Three, increasing confusion and anxiety. anxiety. Four, the desperate invention of a new demand in a useless attempt to quiet the haunting doubts. Quite a few more. There exists a sinister and worldwide conspiracy to drive you insane, for insane human beings can be enslaved, enslaved with deceptive promises. <clears throat> Your chance for escaping insanity consists of understanding this fact instead of fearing it. And one fact you must understand is that you, in your present state, are a part of this maniacal conspiracy. All dark-minded human beings are part of it, but do not know it. Remember the following guideline. The next time you feel helpless in the face of the world's insanity, discover who is the who who feels helpless. Please don't tell me what I want to give you. I will tell you what I want to give you. Here's a curious contradiction of the ordinary mind. A man wants others to think well of him, yet believes himself to be the lowest of the low. This is a perfect example of the alternating roles of the false self. It will play the part of either a good or a bad person, just as long as the actor can think about its own make-believe existence. Unpleasant behavior is sick behavior. Few people want to think about this fact, but you will do so. From now on, you will see that unpleasant people are sick people. You know the thousand varieties of unpleasantness 
including sarcastic accusation, delirious demands, repulsive self-worship, a cold and hostile face. If your behavior is unpleasant, you must see that you have chosen midnight over noon and see that you will stumble and fall in your own darkness. If another person is unpleasant, realize that your wish for sunlight must, never, must have nothing to do with his darkness. You can no longer believe in your own self-written propaganda about yourself. Congratulations, you are on the way. Another time, another place, another person. That is the whole philosophy of an unwhole mind. You tell me that there is no reason for a sense of humor, that you have nothing to make you laugh. I tell you that you do, which are your own ridiculous daily attempts to win approval. This absurd drama can at least make you alternate between laughs and tears. I can see the connection between me and my personal life, but I can't quite see the connection between me, my personal life, and your personal curiosity. I would be most grateful for your explanation. Listen to this one. Many people are incapable of decent, courteous, and intelligent behavior at a public meeting. Here are a few, example, here are a few examples of childish behavior. He or she interrupts the speaker, uses vulgar and filthy language, sneers at truths he can't understand, mutters hostile remarks, insolently chews gum, angrily gets up and stamps out of the room, he rudely whispers foolish remarks to a neighbor during the lecture, <clears throat> maintains a malicious look on his face, makes stupid comments which he considers brilliant, he commits blasphemy, tells shameless lies about wanting a higher life, gives a long and boring and self-centered speech, tries to start an argument, he reveals his mental sickness by asking hate-filled questions. His absence of outer good manners reveals the presence of inner violence. If you are one of these low and evil creatures of the animal world, don't come to this class. Stay in the alligator swamp where you feel at home. When watching a movie, be sure to remain in the audience and not join the action on the screen. Do you feel better now that you have made that hateful accusation and told a lie as well? And the last one. Take a small slip of paper. Write the word sandwich on it. Now eat that word on the paper. Is your hunger satisfied? If your relationship with another person is right, you need give no thought about his kind of relationship with you. The sun is always in right relationship with midnight on earth because it really has no relationship with it at all. Darkness can descend on earth a million times, but the sun still knows only its own light. Listen carefully when the devil whispers, and in his stupidity he will show you exactly how to defeat him. For example, he will tell you that winning an advantage over others is all that makes life worth living. Study that shallow propaganda and then tell the devil something. Tell, tell the devil something. Tell him that you have won a thousand times like that and still have not won. Question the devil's assumption. There is true caring for others when you are consciously intolerant of the behavior by which they are wrecking themselves. A psychological law. If you get your feelings hurt frequently and intensely, you like to frequently and intensely hurt the feelings of others. Your lack of realization of this does not make it any less true. I just turned on my kitchen faucet to watch the water gush forth with full force, which reminds me not to ask you any more questions. It is the dedicated duty of every lost human being to keep you as lost as he is. Here's an encouraging one. Don't miss this one. If you have not been chosen for self-elevation, you can still choose to be chosen. Knowledge of divine nature is possible only by entering and passing through the dark tunnel of human nature. Any other way leads to self-trickery and self-isolation. 
This class will not destroy you by telling you comforting lies. We'll listen to this one. I am going to start a brain transplant business. May I count on you as a customer? <laughs> the reason you like your mentally sick friends is because you are just like them. You are really liking yourself in them. The trap is both inside you and outside you. You must first break the inner trap of your own delusions in order to be free of the outer trap. An example of breaking only the outer trap is to get rid of a harmful person without, gaining ins without also gaining insight from the experience. In this case, you will sooner or later fall into the trap of another harmful human relationship. It is your moral duty to make my decisions for me, but, of course, it is my moral duty to hate you for any decisions I don't like. When you know how to do it, you can cry your way all the way to dry eyes. Here's how to do it. See that tears are an admission of a total breakdown of your fraudulent solutions to your crisis. Realize just that much. Realize that you don't know what to do and never have. Remain with the emptiness experienced in the tears themselves. Stick with that. Now watch what happens next. A simple switch in your viewpoint will swiftly increase your insight into yourself and others. Here's the switch. See another person as a mass of inner conditions, not as a unified outer personality. This, deta this detaches your own distorting likes and dislikes towards someone, freeing the clear vision of non-desire. You now insist that the present way you think and live is the only right and best way for you. Your very daily way of living is absolute proof of this, for you always live out your insistences, whether aware of it or not. This causes a peculiar condition. The peculiar condition is that you are murdering yourself. You are murdering yourself by degrees so small that you cannot see your horrifying crime. Now, the more you are murdering yourself, the more you will push away what you have just heard. I will do what is right even while feeling nervous about it, knowing that doing right for the first time is always accompanied by nervousness on the part of my wrong nature. I will let my right action attract its own right feeling, which will always happen by the power of spiritual laws. This is how lasting inner harmony develops. You like the company of a sickie? What does that tell me about you? Your desire can never understand another person's opposing desire. Your desire's attitude toward another person's opposite desire will be one of hostility or confusion or tears. This means you are painfully chained to the other person's desire. Only your non-desire can understand the other person's desire and be peacefully free of it. The more fashionable you are, the less comfortable you are. You will qualify to see as soon as your personal eyes stop trying to see. The next time you pretend to not see wrongness, the next time you pretend to not see wrongness in yourself, notice how your evasion nags and punishes you. Your noticing is an example of how the devil's pain can be used against him, that is, your insight into painful self-deception weakens its hold on you. Goodbye. I give you back to the world you have preferred. Gloom is passive instability. Insolence is active instability. You can, under, un, you can understand everything you need to know about any human government by realizing that it consists of human beings who have human natures. Every government is simply a collection of personal human desires and deceptions which want what they want with no concern for the destructive consequences. You don't understand a government if you think it can be a source of supply or protection or guidance. A government can only take, it can never give. So remember, a government is simply a collection of deceitful human natures pretending to be of service. Real and valuable service comes from a much higher government. You are excusing yourself all the way into the dark depths of the Bat Cave. 
get rid of all those foreign invaders who inhabit your inner castle and you will be as nice all the time as you are sometime. If truth is leading you, it will also make right decisions for you. And since these decisions are right, they will also make you feel right. So what does it mean if you are still using your usual mind to make your own strained decisions? It means you are not yet taking your decisions from the available cosmic compass. Remember that truth will never lead you into a circumstance without also showing you exactly what to do while within it. It is truth's very nature to reveal clearly to you your needful actions. It is impossible for truth to abandon you. If you feel, if you feel abandoned, you should see that you have carelessly led yourself into the circumstance. This insight allows the cosmic compass to correct your life direction. A message to parents. How you must despise your children to teach them to hate as you have hated. And last, I don't understand what you are saying, so the only intelligent thing to do is to attack you. Listen to these powerful words. God, prayer, meditation, worship, devotion, reverence, humility, sacred salvation. How powerful are these words? How, how powerful to conceal the commission of religious crimes. It is often a painful process for a man and a woman to come to a parting of the ways. I will show you how to pull all the pain out of it. When the other person says goodbye, simply and casually wave goodbye in return. If he never returns to say hello again, that ends the matter and you need never give it another thought. But if he returns to say hello again, you can then decide whether or not you wish to return the hello. This simple formula keeps you in charge of all possibilities. A deceitful coward proclaims, quote, we must discuss our problem. But a valorous person reflects, I must ponder my problem. There are many lessons in this, and here is one of them. Be alert to people who sneakily try to drag you into their swamps by using words such as we and our and us. Once you start struggling in the swamp, watch how quickly our problem is scornfully replaced by your problem. Isn't it marvelous that we can see human nature as it is without being bitter? If there's bitterness, there's no understanding. Lack of bitterness, there is understanding. There is one admission to yourself that is worth more than attendance at 1,000 classes and the reading of 1,000 books. That admission is, what an unseen fool I have been. An insane world does not know that it is insane, and when you tell it that it is insane, its reaction proves both its insanity and its inability to see the fact. What you hear in this room is unacceptable to what is injuring you. What you hear in this room is unacceptable to what is injuring you. If someone has only false earthly values and then runs into heavenly values, nothing valuable will happen to him. He will gain nothing because his earthly values neither recognize nor desire the heavenly values in front of him. This means he will go away from the contact as empty as he came to it, while having no notion of either his opportunity or his rejection of it. But another man who comes into contact with heavenly values and then departs has a definite chance for self-rescue. His vague sensing of his error will bring him back. He is like a hungry man who indifferently picks just one grape while passing through a vineyard and later finds it to be just what he needed. There is one great opportunity, this is one great opportunity for a man or a woman to come back to obey the sensing that he acted against himself by departing from heavenly values. To come back is everything. May I tell you something that will save you from your hysterical self-rip? May I tell you something that will save you from your hysterical self-ripping, I should explain this a little better. You are saying this to another person, the following sentence. May I tell you something that will save you from your hysterical self-ripping? I will explain to no one but myself. I will explain to no one but myself. How many times today did you explain to another person when they came over and made a little remark I don't say a big thing, a very, very small thing. Why did you take that role instead of this role? And you started explaining. 
Society is cunning, persistent, and absolutely heartless in its attempts to turn the individual into its own maniacal nature. I no longer have confidence in you as a spiritual teacher. I have attended five of your lectures, and not once have you told me how to victimize people without becoming their victim. That's an unconscious thought in sickies who come here. Be, res be respectful of learning. If you are looking for someone to unload your complaints on, look for someone else. I will not participate in your self-injury. When you tell me what is best for me, you are really telling me what is best for you. You are not living where your colorful fantasies say you are, but you can't see that you are living in fairy tales authored by your own nervous imagination. And to complete your mental illness, you reject rescuing realities as the fairy tales. You can define and explain cosmic safety to yourself by asking yourself this question, quote, when I clearly see that a trap is in fact a trap, does it exist as a trap for me? End quote. It is always beneficial to tell the truth, to tell the truth with a capital C. It is always beneficial to tell the truth that you are sorry for your self-defeating behavior. When motivated by the simple recognition and admission that you have been wrong, it is a wise and healthy act. However, your first timid resolve to say you are sorry will arouse furious opposition. This opposition is the devil himself. The devil is more, never more cunningly evil than when warning you against an honest apology threatening you with mysterious and ghastly consequences. You must not listen to his lies which are manufactured in the hell of time thinking. Here is what this means. In the past you have apologized to people who twisted your apology to serve their own sick needs. For example, the reaction was a sneering pounce. The devil warns you against getting hurt again in this way. But remember, never forget that you are now talking with truth. <coughs> not to devil-dominated human beings. And truth is different. It can never be anything but understanding, compassionate, and truly helpful. It always welcomes a contrite heart. So be both humble and bold in telling the truth that you are sorry. Truth will nod briefly in approval, then hand you the next sec section of the map that leads to the top of the mountain. Cry out for help. Cry out at once and without hesitation or shame. It is the one chance you have. Sacrifice all your timidities and cry out for help. Your plea may or may not have sincerity in it, but I hear all pleas. If your cry contains even a bit of trueness, I will both hear and answer. If it lacks sincerity, I will hear but will not answer. But in either case, you will be helped. With sincerity, I will send down angelic impressions which will enlighten your spirit. But if you lack sincerity, I can help you by withholding my help. By with my withholding... Will, my withholding will force you to examine your own cry and personally detect its lack of trueness. And knowledge of this can start a development of trueness where none existed before. So do your part by appealing to the sky, and I will do the rest. I never fail anyone. I know how to handle both the sincere and insincere wish for guidance. I am always ready, ready to show you how to remove yourself from your own weak hands and place yourself in the hands of eternal strength. You inherit eternity by dissolving time while still in it. Vernon, I finally understand what you mean by conscious indifference to daily events. I no longer care what happens as long as it happens to someone else. <laughs> you keep asking me how to take the terrifying leap into the dark, the noble leap that will carry you through the darkness to the light on the other side. Here is how. Give up your confidence. Abandon all confidence. You now have, now have various vague confidences and must drop each one. For example, drop the comforting confidence that you will be able to reach the opposite side without sacrificing your memorized nature. Have no confidence in that dismal distortion. Have no confidence when leaping into the dark unknown, otherwise you are not leaping at all. Leap without confidence in anything, and at the very moment you feel fear doom on the rocks below, you will be held aloft by angels' wings. If you do not know how this miracle can happen, it is not needful to know in advance, for God knows. For he is the miracle worker who will keep you safe. From the start of your leap to your arrival on the solid ground of the other side, you will be safe even when you do not feel safe. Let me repeat that line. You will be safe 
even when you do not feel safe. You see, you don't need confidence at all. You need only God. And the last page. When a hostile person demands an explanation of a spiritual truth, he really does not want an explanation. He just wants to be given ammunition he can fire back at you. No matter what answer he has given, his spirit of hatred is ready to tear it apart. Such a person is a devil, so you should wisely and calmly treat him like one. Happily, your own spiritually mature nature will effortlessly handle him for you. Never argue or discuss truth with this kind of person. To do so is to descend to his loathsome level. What makes it impossible for you to do something new and different with your life is your conceited belief that you can do something new and different with your life. If you can do something truly new, how come you have failed to do so? And no matter how much you lie about it, you have succeeded only in replacing one piece of junk with another piece of junk. New junk is still junk. To experience the truly new, you must persistently study higher facts. They will deliver the authentically new to your days. The greatest tragedy of your life is for you to come to this class where pure truth is taught, then leave the class and not return. It will be your greatest tragedy, but you will not realize that it is a tragedy, which is why it is one. Your one chance for avoiding a dismal fate is to ponder seriously this next sentence you will hear. What is killing you does not want you to attend this class. What is killing you does not want you to attend this class. <coughs> One hundred times a day, an individual tries painfully to convince himself that his various actions are important, sensible, beneficial, necessary. This means that every day he commits one hundred crimes against himself. Calling a foolish act a wise necessity is one of our more malicious and stubborn of self-deceptions. What an odd kind of intelligence you have. It reveals itself only when it can compare itself with a stupid person. And notice how it never has trouble finding people who are stupid when compared with its supreme intelligence. As I said, what a peculiar kind of intelligence you have. It must depend upon another person. It could not stand alone. Few things make me sick, but one of them is your loving nature. <laughs> I want to be reasonable about this, so I've come up with the following fair deal. My part will be to criticize whatever you do. Your part will be to come up with plans more pleasing to me. Anytime you wish to be relieved of false responsibilities and compulsive duties, remember this. You owe everything to reality and nothing to humanity. I just want you to know how well I know you. You have a mind screaming with nightmares. Be honest enough to admit that you have just heard an accurate description. You have a mind screaming with nightmares. By the way, the solution is also known, if you want to know it. Stop blabbing and just notice what you are doing right now. Divided attention is no attention. Stop blabbing and just notice what you are doing right now. If the horrible world which exists outside you does not also exist inside you, it is the same for you as if it does not exist outside you. And the last one. It is just fine to talk about finances and economics, but be sure you know whether you're talking about the economics of human society or of spirituality. When living from authentic spirituality, you can be involved with insane human economics without being punished by them. This is because your social self lives under the false laws of human finances, but your spiritual self does not. Can you imagine an angel worrying over an increase in taxes? Be an angel on earth. When I tell you that I don't want to do something that you want me that you want me to do, that settles the matter once and for all. I am not required to explain to you why I don't want to do it, and I won't. How is that a declaration of liberty? I'll read it again. When I tell you that I don't want to do something that you want me to do, that settles the matter once and for all. I am not required to explain to you why I don't want to do it, and I won't. When you fall apart before other people and they see through your fakery, you must make immediate correction. You must immediately walk into a second scary situation where you will again fall apart, preferably with double the disgrace than before. This technique is known as daring the devil to do his worst. The poor devil would do his best to do his worst, 
which will be a revealing act to witness. When you see who really possesses the disgrace, you will also see the devil flee in disgrace. Sorry, but you are wasting your time trying to make me feel responsible for your desperation. You will, of course, call me cold-hearted, but I know that your desperation is black-hearted. You need only one prayer to cover every difficulty in life. That prayer is, I pray to see more. Here's an interesting one. Ladies, gentlemen, any man who submits to a bossy woman is no man. The reason all can be well right now is because union with truth is possible right now. A real, t a real teacher has a lighted lantern in each hand. He first motions with one hand for the inquirer to go away. The wise inquirer is one who stands in place after the apparent rejection just to see what happens next. And what happens next is the teacher's second motion from the other lantern, which is an invitation to approach. When accepting the invitation, the inquirer is surprised and pleased to find himself within the single circle of light from both lanterns. You fear to admit that you are an insane person living in an insane world. You fear to admit this because you also fear that there be, may be no solution. There is. If you don't yield, you will break. If you yield, you will not break. On Monday you were cruel, and on Tuesday you said you were sorry. But on Wednesday you did it again which means I'm not going to believe anything you say on Thursday. The relief you really want is relief from yourself, but how can you have it when your whole life is dedicated to self-clinging? I have found a magic formula for proving that I am always right. All I need do is to say that you are wrong. You have one thing and one thing only to give to truth. It is called obedience. Show up 100 times regardless. When you are rageful at getting pushed around, try to see you are getting pushed around only by your rage at getting pushed around. No thief can steal whatever is real. Like other products, music comes in many varieties and qualities. There's pretty music, healthy music, boring music, sentimental music, and there is insane music. Here are some facts about music as it relates to an insane mind. If you are insane, you will call everything insane that disagrees with your beloved insanity. Specifically, if your mental sickness craves popular but sick music, you will fiercely rage at those who disapprove of your musical madness. But your lunacy will be quite sure that it is sane, not seeing that its own rage is its very own insanity. Its senseless fury at being thwarted is a good instance of a delirious mind being unable to see itself at the moment of its madness. Rage is lunacy on the loose, and a lunatic mind fights fiercely for its own preservation. It is like a father devil who fanatically protects his young imps, for he needs to use them for his own evil purposes. Finally. If you are the kind of a person who loves to hear ear-piercing human screams, either in person or on television, you are also a lover of mad music, for there is a similarity in the two. Listen carefully, and you will hear shrieks of human despair concealed in sick music. Repeat, listen carefully, and you will hear shrieks of human despair concealed in sick music. After hearing all this, if you still love insane music, sooner or later you will give yourself away to those who can see and here. First, he politely requests that you solve his problems for him. If you agree, he next demands that you solve that you solve his problems for him. Solve his problems. If you agree, he then threatens you with and injury if you fail to solve his problems for him. If you agree, he finally hates and attacks you for not solving his problems for him. Or you made your first big mistake was to fail to simply walk away after his first request. You have to be wide awake to catch that first request. There is only one kind of life that is worthwhile, which consists of leading yourself through life from yourself. 
There is such a thing as a normal and natural dislike of another person in which the dislike has no wrongness or hostility in it. It is a state in which a certain rightness in you wants nothing to do with a certain wrongness in another person. Rightness is calmly repelled by wrongness, as when you decline to approach someone with a cold and suspicious manner. See how oh, that relieves you of false guilt, by the way. A woman loves a man whose relationship with her may or may not include sex, but definitely includes a power of his to protect her. I'll try that one again. A woman loves a man whose relationship with her may or may not include sex, but definitely includes a power of his to protect her. There is really no individual person who sees or understands anything. There is only pure and impersonal seeing and understanding. This becomes clear when you are able to talk about yourself without believing in the self you talk about, which is the same as conscious talking. You are living in a truly spiritual world when you have no world to collapse around you. When the love for truth precedes the love for William or Mary, then the love for William or Mary is genuine. But, of course, from the higher viewpoint, there is no difference between the two loves. There is only one love. And last one. You are living in harmful self-deception if you get nervous or resentful when told you are living in harmful self-deception. Your troubles are real only in the sense that you are still tormented by them, but they are not real in a higher sense. If you suffer by being lost in the hot and dry desert, you can learn how to escape the desert. Once you are out of the desert, the troubles of the desert no longer exist for you, though they still exist for those still lost in the desert. You can speed up life correction with the following method. Ah, you keep asking me how, how, how. Here is how. You can speed up life correction with the following method. The next time it happens, remember what happened the last time it happened. There is a simple test of your mental maturity, which is this. You are immature to the extent that you get flustered and annoyed by unexpected event events. A mature mind may meet many unexpected events, but is not caught unaware by them. Not having a mind frozen with ego demands for what should happen, he never fights the unexpected and is therefore able to handle it with calm intelligence. His own inner resources are far superior to external events. He is like a man who owns a secret farm and who is therefore unconcerned when the grocery market runs out of food. No one ever learns from experience alone. To the experience must be added the power of watchfulness, perception, information, detachment, and a strong wish to not be deceived by the experience. For example, when someone tries to take advantage of you, for example, when someone tries to take advantage of you, that is the experience. But to learn from it, you must not return your deceit for his deceit. Your motives must be different from his. Your higher nature then releases and connects you with lesson learning powers. Do not assume that you know your precise location and height up the slope of the spiritual mountain. For example, don't believe that you are halfway to the top. This blocks your climb, for you bring the mountaintop down to the low level of your own low beliefs. If you are one foot up and cheerfully deceive yourself by saying you are halfway up, you have unknowingly limited the mountaintop to a height of two feet. The sensible plan that guarantees progress is to simply climb daily, neither knowing, knowing nor caring about your present location and height. What blocks investigation that brings revelation? An assumption not seen as an assumption. Presently, you can't live your own life because you don't know what it means to live your own life. What it means to live your own life is to no longer live from the belief that you are living your own life. The vanishing of belief invites the appearance of pure energy that lives your life for you. Nothing is nicer than to not live your own life based on belief. Your own life derived from pure energy is pleasant, lighthearted, carefree. Here's a short one. Courtesy can't be explained to a rude mind. Another short one. If you dial the wrong number, you will get the wrong number. 
A truly spiritual teacher finds it easier to see a high truth than to explain it to lower minds. This is because the explanatory words used by the teacher have multiple meanings to the pupil based on the pupil's associations and preferences connected with the words. For example, the word progress could be unknowingly interpreted by the pupil as meaning progress in being praised for steady attendance in class. The explanation of all this by the teacher to the student will also be distorted by the student. If the teacher uses the word association, the pupil's mind could actually send up a picture of a business association. This is the interference of a human idea that prevents divine perception. There is destructive excitement and there is constructive excitement. You know what destructive excitement is, such as the thrill of receiving unexpected money or having power over other people. Constructive excitement is a miraculous life-elevating experience. It consists of anything that happens to you while you are in a state of surrender to the lesson in it. The feeling that accompanies the learned lesson is constructive excitement. William can never tell William what is right. You cannot and need not prevent the devil from approaching you, but there is a right and victorious way of turning aside his attempts to take you over. It consists of speaking with heavenly authority to both invisible devils within you and also to devil-dominated human beings. This authority arises from a clear insight into the devil's depraved and unredeemable nature. Armed with this heavenly power, you will have one dominating reply to the devil, which is, quote, get along your way, unquote. When you finally tell the devil, get along your way, you smashingly defeat his cunning purpose of making you believe that you have something in common with him. Never forget the next forceful fact. When replying to the devil from the spirit of heaven, the devil must obey your command. He has no choice but to obey. The devil is helpless in the face of true spiritual authority, just as darkness must slink away with the bright light of the rising sun. Only by seeing that your life is not important as it now unfolds can you finally see how rightly important it can be. This new and true feeling of importance will not be given to you by yourself, but by something that is not yourself. So what you need is a bit of initiative to uncover false self-values. Then the rest will be done for you by something that is not you. There are a thousand ways the devil can make Tom or Helen shake with doubt. There is no way the devil can make the true wisdom in Tom or Helen shake with doubt. Watch and see whether that arising thought causes you pain or regret. Know that it is an unnecessary thought. At first it is hard to see that it is, an unnecess it is unnecessary because thought itself will lie to you and insist that your life depends upon the presence of painful thoughts. Your nervous life, your nervous life does indeed depend upon tormenting thoughts of all kinds, but that is not the kind of a life that you want. Life attracts like. You now know the real reason you married a nitwit. Thought watching is a highly enjoyable and practical adventure. One characteristic of a sane mind is its refusal to get involved in society's insanity because it recognizes insanity when it sees it. You can uh, cooperate with me on this next one. Maybe the world is suffering from that weird little sickness known as, fill in your own name, itis. Maybe the world is suffering from... A truthful lecture is boring to an untruthful mind. What is un unfortunate for your so-called dignity is fortunate for you. Let's try that one again. What is unfortunate for your so-called dignity is fortunate for you. You are quite convinced that it is your doom to see that your self-glorified self cannot win, but it is really your only rescue. There is a definite connection between mental sickness and bad manners. Watch for the connection. As you mingle with people, watch how neurosis frequently lashes out at people with contemptuous behavior and outrageous demands. 
The problem is that mental sickness never sees bad manners as bad manners, which is what keeps it sick and bad. There must be something wrong with my ear. It can't keep up with your mouth. Here is something that is impossible. It is impossible to explain to one devil-dominated human being that another devil-dominated human being is devil-dominated. Anytime you want to be the big hero, you are going to be awfully nervous about it. Right? There is only one tyrant in life, which is a lack of understanding of life. Since understanding can be acquired, the tyrant need not be endured. Here's a practical one. Hang up the phone on any little sneak who refuses to identify himself. You do it next time. Just drop the phone down. That's all there is to it. You don't owe him or her anything. Fear is the time self, but not the eternal self. And the last one. This class is not a church where you are being loved to death. There was once a young rabbit who attended classes on how to avoid dangerous coyotes. The young rabbit boldly asked questions and took an active part in class discussions. One night the teacher cautioned, quote, beware of a certain kind of conceit. Beware lest you think that the safety you have in this classroom will, au will automatically accompany you out into the world of dangerous coyotes, end quote. But the young rabbit did not hear this caution. He was too busy thinking of his next question to ask. So he boldly and cheerfully walked out of the classroom into the night, into the world of dangerous coyotes. Poor little dumb bunny. The fact that you do not know is not your main problem. The fact that you do not know that you do not know is not your main problem. Your chief difficulty is that you do not know that you do not know and a hostile spirit and you insist that things remain as they are. How weird and how pitiful. How weird and how pitiful. You worship your own ignorance. Only noise makes mistakes. Silence never makes mistakes. The guaranteed way to be through with it is to go through with it. Hmm? The devil is a raging worry to himself and loves it. He therefore works fiercely to make you think that you have worries so that he can continue to masquerade as you. Your detection of this trick, trick frees you of both the devil and his worries. Let's try that one again. The devil is a raging worry to himself and loves it. He therefore works fiercely to make you think that you have worries so that he can continue to masquerade as you. Your detection of this trick frees you of both the devil and his worries. Stupidity consists of not seeing the danger you are to yourself and others. An inconsiderate person does not see how much unnecessary work he selfishly piles on others. Not seeing this fact, he hurts with disbelieving indignation when told about it. One cruel trick of a sick teacher is to take a harmful human trait and use clever words to make it appear to be a healthy characteristic. This succeeds in popular lectures and articles because this is what most audiences want to hear. For example, a sick teacher declares that shyness is a type of modesty, a form of consideration for other people which lets others do the talking. The fact is that shyness is a form of unwholeness, and a million words of deceitful flattery will not reduce the shy person's pain one bit. I didn't know there was a law against ignoring someone you don't want to talk to. Once seeing that something is truly natural, you can stop right there. You need not go on to decide whether it is good or bad. Naturalness contains nothing of the usual kind of human goodness or badness, being neither a hawk nor a dove, but only flight itself. Now your mechanical mind will probably ask what is meant by being natural. 
I expected that common question. The fact that you asked that question means that you would rather ask about naturalness than find it. Once more on that one. Once seeing that something is truly natural, you can stop right there. You need not go on to decide whether it is good or bad. Naturalness contains nothing of the usual kind of human goodness or badness, being neither a hawk nor a dove, but only flight itself. Now your mechanical mind will probably ask what is meant by being natural. I expected that common question. The fact that you ask that question means that you would rather ask about naturalness than find it. You have your friends and your finances. You have your activities and your tomorrows. How pathetic that you have everything but your own life. I will give you a guaranteed method for keeping yourself dull and dejected. Just find pleasure in another person's real or imaginary mistake. That's worth one more round. I will give you a guaranteed method for keeping yourself dull and dejected. Just find pleasure in another person's real or imaginary mistake. When something that is not of your world begins to change your world, you will know it, and know it surely and silently. Your wrongness is your present idea of happiness. Try to see how it is wrecking your life. You have one real chance. That one chance is to find yourself wrong. Never forget the first sentence of this paragraph, which is, your wrongness is your present idea of happiness. Replace that idea. Vernon, you said that one day this inner work would be a lot of fun. Vernon, I'm still waiting. <laughs> and the last one. If you want to know why things are the way they are, it is because things are the way they are. If you try to change the way things are, you will just keep them the way they are. Knowledge of this changes the way you are, which places you in a new and commanding relationship with the way things are. Once more. If you want to know why things are the way they are, it is because things are the way they are. If you try to change the way things are, you will just keep them the way they are. Knowledge of this changes the way you are, which changes, which places you in a new and commanding relationship with the way things are. While there is no you who can rescue you, there can be an impersonal awareness of the rescuing process. The rescue is complete when the awareness is complete. Your silence cannot give out its wisdom as long as your mouth is giving out its nonsense. When you quietly admit that you do not know a particular answer about life, notice that you now know your emptiness. This kind of knowing changes everything. You hope for a miracle in your life. It is possible for you to experience a real miracle. It happens when you hear your silence speak. The problem is not that you have it, but that you are not outgrowing it. Tell a woman 50 times that you like her, after which she will pause three seconds and then ask, Yes, but do you still like me? <laughs> Familiar men? <laughs> if you were really as strong as you imagine you are, you would have no thoughts at all about your strength. Has it ever occurred to you that you are on a collision course with yourself? People like to claim they have no hatred in them, which means a main hate is to see and admit their hatred. If you are what you think about all day long, what are you? I annoy me. You really have only one problem. You refuse all the clear evidence that you are wrong. Change all that. Just now, the most important thing you can be is to be wrong. Be as fearful as you like of being wrong, but be wrong. Just be wrong. It is not wrong to be wrong. It is right to be wrong. And it is also healthy and liberating. Weakness invites contempt from weak people. Truth will show you what to do with yourself every day just as soon as you no longer know what to do. Dear boyfriend, no doubt you remember that last night I gave you a kiss. 
I hope you realize what this means. It means you must marry me and support me for the rest of my life. <laughs> Here is the difference between mental sickness and spiritual health. Mental sickness dramatizes human suffering, which makes it incapable of offering the cure. Spiritual health understands human suffering, which qualifies it to present the cure. The reason there is so much wrong with a question is because there is so much wrong with the questioner. If you want to know who you are not, you are not your biography of yourself. I falsely love what I see because I falsely love what I am. I see only what I am. I am only what I see. When seeing through the net of ideas stops, inner division stops. You are terrible, but happily for you, you are not you. And the last one, if you really understand human nature, you will know everything needed to know to live skillfully in this world. But if you merely pretend to know human nature, you will be the helpless victim of people and events. Now do you think it worthwhile to really understand human nature? If you have no spiritual initiative of your own, you will unknowingly try to steal initiative from those who have it. But you will go nowhere and you will feel your emptiness. If you don't conform to the way things are in reality, you must suffer from the way things are not. My dear friend, for the last several minutes you have talked steadily to me about yourself and your activities. May I ask you a question about it? Might it occur to you that I have no interest at all in what you are saying? Or does your sickening self-centeredness prevent you from seeing this? My rights consist of ignoring your idiocy when you scream for your rights. The secret of spiritual success is to repeatedly let the house collapse on top of you so often and so watchfully that you finally see that there is neither a house to collapse nor anyone for it to collapse on. No matter how stupid the activity, self-interest always calls it intelligence. There is one question you can ask a person that determines whether or not he has a chance to be different. That question is, quote, are you a confused human being, end quote. If he answers yes from his heart, he has a chance. If he lies and says no, or if he answers yes while thinking no, he has no chance at all. Do-gooders are do-batters. You are trying to reach the place where you can say, no one can hurt me now. Trying to reach it prevents you from reaching it. Think carefully on this one. I know a man who changed the name of his name in the hope of changing his future. Well, I know the perfect change of name for some of you. Call yourself Mr. Perry Noid. <laughs> or if you prefer, call yourself Mr. Cy Copat. <laughs> it took time, don't you think? <laughs> See the switch in pace? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Remember, there is nothing wrong about something being true. Try that one again. Remember, there is nothing wrong about something being true. That could change your life. Your repentance is false if you ask only for forgiveness. Your repentance is true only if you ask for both forgiveness and enlightenment. Lostness does not know it is lost, which is why a lost person has neither understanding nor interest in his lost condition. Only awareness of his lostness can arouse a person toward finding himself. The world is out to get you all right, but if you are not the you the world thinks you are, it cannot get you. Isn't that nice? Don't expect immature minds to be interested in mature topics. An insane human being wants you to doubt your present false position so that he can replace it with his own self-serving false position. A sane human being wants you to doubt your present false position so that you can replace it with the effortless ways of sanity. My worry has nothing to do with me. Teacher, 
Help me by, by making my daily decisions for me. Student, I will help you even more than that. I free you to develop daily decisions. When you don't know what to do, do nothing, for that is something. Hmm? Know that distress and disappointment are states of stupidity and nothing else. Do not trust them. They have no intelligence whatever in them. Let me read that one over. Know that distress and disappointment are states of stupidity and nothing else. Do not trust them. They have no intelligence whatever in them. They can only lead you astray. You are very foolish in being lured after their frantic shrieks. They shout that they are right, but they are always wrong and wrong for you personally. Do not follow the deceitful lures of distress and disappointment. The world is simply an immense insane asylum, and there is no difference between the patients and the doctors. It is right and natural, not weak and irresponsible, for a woman to want a man to take care of her. Please tell me something. If I were to describe your actual mental condition as it operates in secret, how would I describe it? Once again, if I were to describe your actual mental condition, how would I describe it? There is something seriously wrong with you. There is no way you can deny that fact. So does it make sense to refuse to do something about it? The habitual mind cannot know of the existence of the alternative to the habitual mind. Ponder that one a minute. The habitual mind cannot know of the existence of the alternative to the habitual mind. The time self does not have everlasting life. The timeless self does. Happiness consists of knowing the answer to the question, who is this defeat happening to? The answer is no one. One day you may meet an old friend and say silently to him, quote, you don't know it, but you are not talking with the same man you used to know, end quote. To wake up means to no longer unknowingly toss coals onto your own uncomfortable inner fire. Noise has no poise. Very careful on the next one, please. The it in you is doing all those things that are done in your life. The it performs all your actions, no doubt about that. The only way to tell the difference between the good things and the bad things that are done to you, then, is to take the you out of the it. Then, once understanding the mental it, you will do everything only from the cosmic it which is the naturally flowing action of reality. The burning feeling of hatred is the hater's idea of happiness. And the last one, if you take, you will have less. If you give, you will have more. This is spiritual law. This higher kind of giving will be easier understood by thinking of it as release. You release your old nature, which in turn causes the releasing and the giving of the new nature. In this higher state, there is no personal giver and no personal receiver. There is only the natural and healthy giving of the universe to itself. The only person who can really take care of you is a person who knows how to take care of himself. With this in mind, how many people do you know who can take care of you? When someone hints that he will turn against you unless you please him, invite him to turn against you at once and with full force. Isn't that beautiful? Dear society, don't tell me what I want. I will tell myself what I want. Always remember the following fact. Anyone who is a burden to you receives secret and sinister pleasure from burdening you. Your only duty toward him is to quietly and absolutely refuse to be burdened by him. Understand that this gives him the only chance he has for lifting the burden he is to himself. When I ask you a question, will you please tell me what I need to know, not what you want to talk about? You watch that when you ask someone a question, how they'll pounce right on it to talk about what they want to talk about instead of answering your question concisely. 
Your insight is growing if you really understand the following statement. It makes no difference who was elected president of the lunatic asylum. <laughs> this class has no duty to teach the unteachable. If you don't stop angrily demanding what you want, you will be punished. You will be punished by getting it. Ever had that experience? Huh? People who have finally decided to waste their lives in concealed hostility are totally dedicated to wasting your life also. They have no conscience whatever in spreading the wastage and wreckage from them to you, and they do it with devilish cunning. Vow now that you will understand this so deeply, this so deeply, that no one will ever again be able to waste your life. Higher energy can do something that nothing else can do. What it can do is to conquer the universe. I am not going to cringe before life, which does not mean I am going to be hostile. If a man is insane and 200 million people claim he is sane, he is still insane. There is no excuse for an inability to understand higher truths, for if you cancel refusal to understand, you cancel inability to understand. Going into the meadow, a wolf solemnly promised the sheep that he would stop attacking them. With great relief, the sheep accepted the wolf's repentance. Sure enough, the attacks vanished, for so had the sheep. <laughs> for construction or destruction, you get what you love. Moreover, you are what you love. What you must do for yourself is to see that you cannot do it for yourself after which it is done for you. The only person who really understands goodness is someone who really understands evil. When the world is not in you, the world cannot scare you. The only real mistake in any experience is the neglect to use the experience to release more inner light. A teacher told a student, quote, I can't do anything more for you because I can't do anything more with you." End quote. A right relationship exists between you and another person only when your own right relationship with yourself voluntarily and naturally extends itself to the other person. All wrong relationships lack this qualification. Search it out. A description of a free mind. You can never give it more than it can bear. The treasure is under the house, but you cannot find it without first tearing down the house. Connect. A feeling makes you feel bad only because you take it as your feeling. This one is a question. Stupidity hurts. Intelligence does not hurt. Examining this fact, how intelligent are you? Worried thought prevents practical thought, which could prevent worried thought. Do you try that again, Eleanor? Okay. Worried thought prevents practical thought, which could prevent worried thought. Your fiery desire is unable to put itself into another person's place, for it recognizes no place but its own. This is an example of conceited self-destruction at its worst. We are here in class to be as foolish as we really are, and there is nothing foolish about that. Ignorance of human nature is a delight to evil human nature. Evil human nature operates and injures people only when people are ignorant of its nature. How about this next one? Would this apply to anyone here in the class? Desperation has no consideration. Is there no end to the cruelty of human beings causing fear and misery to other human beings? No, there is absolutely no end to it. Only you can stop causing fear and misery. Fear fiercely refuses to let you investigate itself, so the only cheerful for thing, thing for you to do is to investigate it. 
still fiercely refuses to let you investigate itself. So the only cheerful thing for you to do is to investigate it. Human existence on Earth makes no sense at all the way it presently operates. So any effort you make to make sense out of it will only drive you more senseless. You cannot make sense out of ordinary human life, but you can understand clearly that it makes no sense. This places you on a higher level, which alone makes sense. Maybe you can forgive someone who, who has injured you, but see if you can forgive someone whom you have injured. Have you ever noticed how you feel towards someone whom you have hurt? Okay. There is never anything wrong in permitting yourself to remain insecure. There is always everything right in permitting yourself to feel insecure at all times and in all places. Insecurity is a very beautiful state and it is about time you stop cheating yourself out of it. There is never anything wrong in permitting yourself to remain insecure. There is always everything right in permitting yourself to feel insecure at all times and in all places. Insecurity is a very beautiful state, and it is about time you stop cheating yourself out of it. Only the mind asks for security. A false messenger cannot deliver a real message. Bats hate the light. They love darkness because it matches their own nature, which means they love themselves. Therefore it follows that bats must hate the light because it is unlike their own nature. Would you like a true pleasure? Just be pleasant without thinking about it. Would you like a true pleasure? Just be pleasant without thinking about it. You place yourself in great personal danger when you are mechanically kindly and helpful to a lost person. And if you don't try to understand what this means, you will find yourself in danger when it is too late to save yourself from injury at the hands of the lost person. Lost people are totally treacherous. Your ability to be told will go as equally fast as your awareness that you cannot be told. Remember always, when you cannot be told, you do not realize that you cannot be told. And last, you are sad only because you are absent from home, and since you can return home, sadness can end. One evil loves to pounce upon another evil in an effort to trick people into thinking that it is not evil. It usually works because foolish human beings automatically believe that only goodness denounces evil. It seldom occurs to the limited thinking of most people that evil delights in condemning evil. You might ponder this next one. If fierce dragons constantly appear and disappear in your life, your own mad mind, your own mind is the mad magician. I'll try that one again. If fierce dragons constantly appear and disappear in your life, your own mind is the mad magician. Agreed? I am not yesterday. Aren't you grateful? <laughs> I like this one. Next one. Never tell vultures what you plan to have for lunch. If you... <laughs> well, how many of you go around telling vultures what you're having for lunch? <laughs> All right, you will stop and not only stop, but you will desist. <laughs> you know, I, I do want to assure you that there's a bit more profundity behind the surfaceality of some of these. <laughs> Never tell vultures what you plan to have for lunch. If you tell them you are having coals... <laughs> well, I like to have fun, too. Never tell vultures what you plan to have for lunch. If you tell them you are having coleslaw, they will swoop down and corner the cabbage market. <laughs> Inner liberation can be described as a condition in which you no longer take either credit or blame for anything. You still want the credit, but not the blame, right? Okay. 
How's this for getting to the point on this next one? Your unhappiness consists of what you cannot be told about yourself. Agreed? Okay. Okay. In the entire history of speeches and lectures and sermons, there has never existed a good and a brave audience. An audience of hearers is always weak, always cowardly, always violent, and always wrong. The only sane thing to do with the world is to let it struggle with its own problems. You can do this only when seeing clearly that the world prefers to struggle painfully with its problems, never really wanting solutions. I don't know a more relieving statement than, I don't know. You will be rescued from yourself upon one condition. The condition is that you endure being called what you actually are inwardly. Rescue consists of going beyond your habitual and hostile reaction to being called what you actually are inwardly. If you lose something wrong, you will find something right. A reminder, you are not here on earth to live up to the expectations of others. You are here to develop into a whole and happy human being. It is easy to bear the sorrows of someone else. Okay? The politicians can spend billions of dollars of the taxpayers' money to relieve suffering mankind, but if they had to contribute one penny personally, all welfare would cease. A foolish rabbit entered the den of the king of wolves to complain about his vicious treatment from other wolves. From time to time you hear someone starting an accusation with the phrase, but you told me. When hearing this, know that you are hearing someone who demands that you think for him, but who is eager to blame you when things go wrong. Beware of weak and revengeful people who accuse, but you told me. If you love, you don't. You need not complicate your definition of truth. Truth is simply what remains after human delusion have, has been removed through self-insight. A powerful question. How can you discover the reality beyond fakery unless you dare to venture beyond fakery? A sickie is very grateful to another sickie who gives him something to be sick about. For example, a rude person eagerly awaits another rude person's sarcastic remark, after which they fight with grateful enjoyment and destruction. And the last one for now, and a very important one. The intellect angrily fears its dismissal as the hero of the universe. The very knowledge of this helps you to get on with this dismissal, which makes you sane and happy. What you have just heard has no meaning whatever to those who insist upon remaining insane and unhappy. If you own a dog that yaps and snaps at people, you are that dog. That's a fact. Do you know that? I can tell you what a person is like when I see their dog, and I know there's a correlation there somewhere, which I wouldn't dare tell the owner about. Sorry, but you will never convince me that the problem you invited is my problem to chase away. Never. I now see too much to fall for that. I see that the only one who can end his problem is, is, is the same one who started it. This is spiritual and psychological law. The cosmic doctor does not make house calls. The patient must go to the higher hospital. One practical, practical advantage that comes with a higher view is the ease and competence you have in all your human relationships. You instantly and thoroughly understand everyone you meet, friend or stranger, and do the right thing every time, which is to simply remain yourself. In this calm state, you cannot be captured by the nervousness or the hostility of other people toward you. 
If you are compelled to think about this condition, it controls you. If you don't need to think about it, you control it. But this kind of control is unique. It is a state in which there is neither a controller nor anything to be controlled. It is non-mental control, something like a man in good health who never needs to think about controlling illness. Kindness and generosity can never help a sick human being who has already made up his mind to remain sick. He will take everything he can get from you, but he has no intention of changing inwardly. When you hear your enemy criticized and you feel pleasure over it, there is something seriously wrong with you. It is possible to know that you or another person is faulty without falling into any kind of self-centered reaction. The rejection of truth supplies a very definite and very destructive false pleasure. This must be recognized and abandoned before the individual can have the true pleasure of accepting truth. You must perform your spiritual exercises without prophesying the nature of your reward. If you have a preconceived notion of the reward, you may or may not get it, but the very desire for that reward blocks the higher reward, which is above all mental prophecy. As you actually receive a few higher rewards and your cosmic confidence rises, you feel from yourself that this way, which was at first so strange and frightening, is the way of endless riches. You need not accept the existence of anything until it exists for you personally. There is definitely such a thing as evil spirits who roam the earth with malicious intentions. Having no life of their own, they seek to invade and inhabit individual humans. Remember this point. Since evil spirits have no life of their own, they are insanely compelled to try to take over human bodies, which they succeed in doing. This is what is commonly called demon possession. However, few demon-possessed individuals reveal their condition with abnormal public behavior. The fact is that most demon-possessed people appear to be quite normal, even noble, and many occupy positions in society's affairs, occupy powerful positions in society's affairs. If life won't let you succeed, who said you had to? You have tried everything to solve your problems and nothing has worked out. May I suggest a radical solution? Try being normal. <laughs>